We're going to continue with the double pendulum problem and we left off at this Lagrangian here. So we found the Lagrangian for the full system, including the two bodies. And now what we're going to do is find the Euler Lagrange equation. So now if you notice, how many how many variables do we have? Well the Lagrangian here is a function of theta one, theta two, theta one dot, theta two dot, and then t. So it is implicit that every of these variables is, um, every single one of them is a function of time. So we have a function of five variables. So what we're going to do is, well, we only need the Lagrangian equations to be applied to this. So we're going to have two Euler Lagrange equations. Now we're going to find them term by term. So the first one is going to be this one. So we have the partial fell with respect to the first here. So let's find the terms of this equation. We have this one here. Now remember that in doing the partial differentiation with respect to this function, we treat every other thing here as a constant. So let's see what we have. This is zero. This is zero. This is zero here. We do not have zero because we have this term here. So if we differentiate that, that's going to be minus m2 l1 l2 because remember that we need to expand this out first so we have m2 l1 l2 theta 1 dot theta 2 dot and then we have sine of theta 1 minus theta 2 so this is going to be for this particular one here now what else do we have well this is zero this is zero and this is zero well we have these two terms here so we're going to have plus m1g actually that's going to become a minus because we're differentiating cosine m1g l1 sine of theta 1 minus m2g l1 and now we have sine of theta 1 here and that is it that's it for that part now let's do the other one so let's differentiate with respect to the first equation here so we're going to have the following so this is going to be m1 l1 um, squared this is going to be theta dot 1 now this one is going to be m2 l1 to theta dot 1 so we're going to have those two this is zero this one here actually does have a, a term here so this becomes plus m2 l1 l2 this one is going to disappear so we're left with this one here And now this disappears, this disappears, everything else disappears, so that's it. Now the tricky part becomes that we need to differentiate this whole thing with respect to time. So d over dt of this full equation. Now we have to use the chain rule and we need to be very careful in the way we do it. So the first two terms are quite easy, so all we need to do is the following. We're going to have m1, l one squared theta 1 double dot plus m2 l1 squared theta double dot 1 so that one is fairly straightforward because there's this this is just a linear function of theta we, we have theta to a power of 1 differentiate that that just gives you this now here's where we might have a little bit of trouble because remember that we're differentiating everything with respect to time so here we have a product of two functions we have this here and we have this here because these two are also functions of time. So we're going to have to use the product rule. So the first thing we can do is differentiate this one. So m2 l1 l2 theta double dot 2 cosine of theta 1 minus theta 2. And now we differentiate this function here with respect to the inside. So this is going to be minus, right? So this is going to be minus here. So we're going to have m2 l1 l2 
theta two dot. Now we have a sine theta one minus theta two. And now we multiply this by the derivative of the inside, which is actually going to be theta one dot minus theta two dot. So this one was a bit tricky, so essentially you need to use the product rule and then the chain rule to differentiate this, so you have this component and this component. So now if we put the two of them together, so let's see if we can simplify things a little bit here. So it looks quite tricky, so let's just write down the equation. So we're going to have this part right here, so that's the first thing we need. So minus m2 L1, L2, theta, theta 2. Minus M. Well, we could technically, this one can be factorized. So we can have the following. So M1 plus M2. And then we have L1, G sine of theta 1 so that's going to be that side of the equation and then all of this is going to be equal to this expression right here so let's see if we can simplify things a little bit so we're gonna have let's see well we're gonna have L1 squared theta double dot and now we have M1 plus M2 and then the next term is going to be can we simplify this a little bit further well we could technically expand this out so let's have m2 l1 l2 theta double dot two cosine of theta one minus theta two and then this is going to become minus m2 l1 l2 theta 1 dot theta 2 dot sine getting a little bit crowded here and then the next one is going to be plus m2 l1 l2 theta 2 dot squared because we're multiplying it by this here sine of theta 1 minus theta 2 so I don't know if that simplified things, but essentially what you need to know is that we have this whole thing here. So this is one of the equations. So we perform the differentiation with respect to two of those variables. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing for the second set of variables, so theta2 and theta2 dot. So it gets a little bit complicated and, and you might say, well, th is this really the equation of motion? Well, it turns out that because we have a coupled system of pendulums, we have two pendulums that are coupled to each other. It turns out that, yes, it, it actually turns out that the equations of motion are going to be quite complicated. Especially because the masses are different, the lengths are different, so all of that is just going to add to the complexity of the problem. But you can see this is pretty much it. This encapsulates the whole motion of that. So now if we get the second equation, we are going to have the whole motion of the entire system described in a set of two equations. So how about we go about doing that now? So we're going to grab the same equation. So now we're going to differentiate it with respect to the second variable, so theta 2. And let's see what we get from that. So let's go back up here. <coughs> so theta 2, the first three terms or so are going to be differentiated. So this one is going to be um, this is going to be minus, and then it's going to be oh, it's actually going to be plus because we have that. So m2 l1 l2 theta dot 1 theta dot 2. And now if we go back up, we see this is cosine, so it becomes sine, but because we have this minus here, it becomes minus times minus, so plus in the end. So sine of theta 1 minus theta 2. And now let's see what else we have. This 0, 0, 0, and then we have this term here. So differentiated with respect to theta 2 becomes minus, so 
minus m2 g l2 sine of theta 2 so that's the first thing we get now we're going to differentiate the Lagrangian with respect to the angular velocity of the second body so if we go back up here we're going to have this is zero zero we have this becomes two times that so the two cancels out with this expression here so m2 l2 squared and then we're going to have theta dot two so this is this term and for this term we're going to have this two theta one dot cosine of theta one minus theta two and now let's see what else well that's pretty much it so we're gonna leave that as that and now what we do is we take the time derivative of this particular quantity here so let's see what we get we have this so this is pretty straightforward so that's m2 l2 squared theta double dot two and now the next term is going to be well we have to apply the chain the product rule again because remember we're differentiating everything with respect to time so this becomes plus m2 l1 l2 times theta one double dot cosine of theta one minus theta two and now the chain rule with this so this is going to be well this is going to be minus m2 l1 l2 theta 1 dot sine of theta 1 minus theta 2 times theta 1 dot minus theta 2 dot and now all we need to do is put those two things together so we're going to get the following if we start off with this one we're going to have m2 l1 l2 theta 1 dot theta 2 dot sine of theta 1 minus theta 2 minus m2 g l2 sine theta 2 this is going to be equal to this expression here so let's see if we can simplify in some way I don't really think we can in this case so let's just write it um, out in the same way it is <coughs> so we're gonna have this component here now for this one let's see can we simplify this so we're going to have this here no I don't actually think we can do that so let's just write it out in the same way that we had it we can simply expand it but we're gonna get plus m2 l1 l2 theta 1 double dot cosine of theta 1 minus theta 2 and then this term so this is going to be minus m2 l1 l2 theta dot one squared sine theta one minus theta two and the final one is going to be minus times minus so that's plus so this is going to be plus m2 l1 l2 theta one dot theta two dot and then sine theta 1 minus theta 2 so we could we could group terms here we could factor out the sine and these terms and then put that together but do you get the idea the essentially we have just derived the two equations of motion that characterize this double pendulum system so you can see they're really really complicated and probably if we had used Newtonian mechanics we would have arrived at the same equations but obviously this method allows us to check more uh, systematically each step because we know that we have the energies and then we can use the energy to find the Lagrangian so once you get to this point it's just a matter of being very careful with the derivatives but this is it these are the two equations of motion we have we have the first one here 
the second one here and all we need to do is rearrange it so that we can actually solve for the accelerations <coughs> in terms of a system <coughs> so that was it for this video and we're going to continue with some more examples of Lagrangian mechanics but you can see that things get a little bit more complicated with um, more complicated systems like this one <coughs>